next, my standing tuck. Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Safrana with, and it's time for another edition of Much Abru About Nothing. And this week, we have oh, maybe my favorite act that we've played in a really long time. We are heading to Magic Arena to Historic to play Lizelle's Acrobatics in this deck. Oh my god, it is so sweet. So this is a deck that actually started on the stream. Uh, we brewed it together at the end of a stream, but we only got to play like a match with it, and then the stream ended, and the deck felt really sweet. So I've still been working on it. It's never really gotten its due. So today we're going to see the absurdity of Lizelle's acrobatics in action. So let's talk about what this deck's trying to do. Jump into the games. So this is a ETB Panharmonicon Bling style deck. We start off with a bunch of ETB creatures. We got Wall of Blossoms, Small Drifter to draw cards, Skyclave, Deputy Detention, and Tulsimer for removal, Siege Rhino for life gain and draining, and our finisher, Titan of Industry, a little bit of everything. So we just want to kind of, you know, generate some value, play some ETB creatures. We got a Panharmonic on an Yarak to double them up, but the main way we double up these triggers is by blinking our ETB creatures. We got four Soul Herders can blink something every turn. We got Charming Prince to blink something. We got Ephemerate can blink twice for one mana instant speed, but the real plan is Lizelle's Acrobatics. This is a new card from Commander Legends Battle for Baldur's Gate, and this is one of the most ridiculous cards that Wizards has printed in a long time. So it's a four mana instant. It exiles all of your non-token creatures, and then you roll a d20. If you get a one to nine, those creatures exile, and then come back on your end step. If you roll a 10 to 20, all of your creatures immediately come back into play and then exile again and come back on your end step. If you high roll with this card, what it really says is trigger the ETB of all your ETB creatures and then exile them and then return them on your end step. And then you get all their ETB triggers again. It is bonkers. Like this was a seizure. I know you're draining for six. You're drawing so many cards with Moldrifter, but that's not enough value for us. The real combo of this deck is acrobatics with timeless witness. Timeless witness, just get something back from a graveyard to our hand. So this sets up the most absurd value loop that we've played in a long time. What you do is Timeless Witness gets back acrobatics. Then you can acrobatics. You blink your entire board. You get all your ETB triggers. One of those ETB triggers is Timeless Witness, which gets back acrobatics. So what this means is we're probably going to blink our entire board twice each turn cycle. Once during our turn, once during our opponent's turn. And any ETB triggers are just going to go off. We're going to gain so much life and drain so much with Siege Rhino. We're going to draw our deck with Mold Rifters. We're going to exile all of our opponent's stuff with Skyclave Apparition. And remember, if we high roll, we're getting double each time we acrobatics as well, which is like a 50-50 shot. So that's not all that uncommon. So that's the plan of the deck. ETB triggers, panharmonicons, blink stuff, eventually find acrobatics timeless witness and generate the biggest amount of value that you can imagine with ETB triggers in the history of magic. We also got some ramp to hold things together, one Vivian to find our combo pieces, mana base, some MDFCs, mostly trying to make our five color mana work, sideboard, we got some more creatures to blink, some control hate like Dovin's Veto, a bunch of removal for aggro, some graveyard hate, a Arian for some extra blink value, and that is Lizelle's Acrobatics for Historic. That is our Much of Brew deck for this week, and I love this deck. I'm not going to say anything else. Let's just get into the games. You will see what this deck can do, and it is spectacular. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoy it, and I'll be back in a bit for the wrap-up. Need some Dominary United cards? Well, you can snag them from our awesome sponsor, Card Kingdom, by heading over to cardkingdom.com slash mtggoldfish, and you'll even get a free goldfish sticker. Just let them know you want one in your order notes. Much brew about nothing time. We are doing some acrobatics this week. This is fine. No real payoff, so we got some life gain, some ramp, some scry. Seems reasonable enough. Um, yeah, try them. Goop. Guildgates, eh? Okay. Well, in that case, uh, Prosperous Ingiba. Guildgates. So big stuff in Maze's End. Maze's End's probably a problem. I don't know if we can race Maze's End. Oh, well, we might be able to race Maze's End. If our opponent's just going to miss land drops, we probably can. Well, let's do some scrying. Uh, Deputy Bottom. Wall of Blossom's top, tap land, g hit you for one, go. Opponent. Oh, the saddest grazer. 
Ooh, ooh. I don't know if we have any answers for what our opponent's doing, honestly. Yeah, like if they maze his end us, they maze his end us. We aren't doing anything about it. We can bring in the Knight of Autumns to deal with enchantments. And I guess maybe Vito's? Go down. Tulsimir doesn't seem great. This is actually a good Panharmonicon matchup, I think. Tulsimir, we can go down. We can cut a, maybe like one Wall of Blossoms, one Innkeeper. Yeah, let's go on Timeless Witness. Yeah, that's fine. Let's write it like that. Yeah, my main concern, so I think we can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the, the card draw and the big creatures. Maze is that we just don't have a way to kill a land. So if our opponent actually can ramp into the Maze and kill, then I guess they get us. I don't think we can keep that one. Oh, this is so sketchy, but we're gonna keep it. Uh, the problem with this hand is we don't have green mana. Actually, because we don't have green mana, let's put yeah, let's put goose to the bottom. All right, green source. What we would give for a green source? Veto. All right, well, tab land go. Oh, boo. Well, we might be in our opponent's uh, <laughs> our opponent's shoes. Last game, our opponent was the one man is screwed. This game, it could be us. Plaza of Harmony, and... Ugh, Gatebreaker Ram. All right, well, more blue mana. <laughs> Still no green mana. We're a ways away from actually casting anything, Plaza of Harmony. Opponent. Please, no more threats. Okay, that's, that's good. Good, we'll counter the Guild Summit. I mean, if we can draw land, we got hope. Down to 14. This ram is a clock. Ugh. All right, well, soul herder, I guess, on an empty board. <laughs> we look like an Esper control deck at the moment, but we very much are not. Grazer. No land hits us, no blocks. Well, we're basically t trusting the Skyclave. Ooh, there's green mana for the future. Well, land and Skyclave. Get rid of the ram. No attacks. Yes, we are gonna blink. Trying to play around Gates of Blaze. I think blinking is the best way. This is gonna give our opponent a 3-3 three, three token. But it's gonna make our Soul Herder a 4-4, four, four, so it dodges. And now next turn we can actually start potentially drawing cards or Rhinoing. We're actually almost to Acrobatics time, opponent. Rejuvenator, land, path, <gasps> Panharmonicon. I can't resist, I can't resist. <laughs> I think it's probably wrong, but I can't resist. All right, blink the Skyclave. The more of our opponent's creatures we turn into tokens, the better, I think, with Gates of Blaze. Plus, we really want the Soul Herder to keep growing. Okay, pass the turn. Next turn could be a fun turn with this Panharmonicon. Land. Gate Colossus, pretty big. <gasps> Acrobatics too. All right, so, Prosperous Innkeeper. Make some treasures. Wall of Blossoms. Double draw. Hopefully hit a land. Play the land. Siege Rhino. Double drain. Gain some life. Pass the turn. Blink, we're at 18. Let's just blink Wall of Blossoms, draw some cards. I think we wanna to try to set up for the Acrobatics combo. We gotta find the Timeless Witness for the full loop. Gain a bunch of life. All right, lands are fine. I mean, we gain enough life that we can take the Gate Colossus hit for now, which is good. Opponent. Ooh, opponent's gonna draw some cards, okay. Well, game on, opponent. Let's everyone draw cards. Guild Summit, I assume refuels. Yeah, draws three. And another one. Bone it passes. Well, let's play Gilded Goose. Step one. Make some food, gain some life. Acrobatics. Going for the high roll, please. Ah, 14. Okay. They all come back. Here they go again. Panharmonicon's out. That's a lot of triggers. Uh, get rid of the guild summit. Oh, it's so good. Oh, it's so beautiful when it works. Stack them up, 34 triggers. Get rid of your stuff, gain some life, draw some cards. We're up to 38. All right, let's just play the land untapped and take Yarion. And then end of turn, 
They all come back again. Let's repeat that process. <laughs> Make some food, gain some life, drain you a bit. And we drew the ephemera and our opponents at eight. And I mean, that should do it. I think with this ephemerate in hand, we just rhino blink them. We went from almost dead to 52. Like that is the power. That is the power of acrobatics. Like literally that is, oh, it's so good. There's not another card in magic that does this. What this really says is, so Siege Rhino is not lethal. So I think what we do is just, oh, this is sad. But yeah, I think we blink the wall of blossoms to draw a couple cards. Titan of Industry? Sure. All right. Board Raft. Plaza. Might as well hit us. Down to 46. What Acrobatics actually says is, blink all your stuff, but if you high roll, blink all your stuff and trigger all your ETBs. If you got Panharmonic on, you blink all your stuff and double trigger your ETBs, which is even better. All right, Prosperous Innkeeper. Make some treasures. Land untapped. Titan of Industry. Let's see. 4-4 four, four, blow up gate clauses. 4-4 four, four, shield counter on Titan of Industry. Gain a tiny bit of life. And pass the turn. <laughs> Where's a Muldrift? We need a Muldrifter. Muldrifter would be sweet. So we still have a concern that we need our opponent to die before one, two, three, four, five, six. Before they means is oh, all modes. Well, all right, that's sad. One, two, three. We even lose our Panharmonicon. Oh, all right, cycle. Now there's a Rhino. Well, play the Rhino, drain ya. Play the land, Yarion, blank the Rhino, drain ya. Oh, down to three. Can we close it out? The problem is our hand is bad now. Gates ablaze to sweep the board. We're a Rhino away at the moment. Okay. Yeah, grab those gates. Grab those gates. Come on, Rhino. Come on, Rhino. Come on, Rhino. Phone it. Oh, grabs a fake gate. Charming Prince. Well, scry. Which Charming Prince? Bottom and bottom. Cycle of Triome. Hit a land that doesn't do anything. Tap land. Skyclave. Go. Opponent. Genesis Ultimatum. Cami War. A bunch of lands. I mean, they do need to stop the oh, Gatebreaker Ram. Tap land. Wow, I think we got there. The Charming Prince. My opponent made that super close. That was a wild game. We did our thing and our opponent had the farewell to undo it, but in the end, Blink Power, too strong. Actually, Charming Prince, <laughs> too good. Too good for the camis. <laughs> oh, sweet, sweet. Much brew about nothing time. We are coming off with uh, <laughs> some of my favorite cards this week. Soul Herders, Siege Rhinos, and a huge new addition in Lazelle's Acrobatics. This was actually a deck that uh, it began its life on on the Goldfish stream, which you can find at twitch.tv slash Goldfish Tuesdays, Thursdays. Uh, but this is the deck that we built on stream and then I've been playing it and tuning it and it keeps doing cooler things. And I figured this deck just does such sweet things that I, I had to make it into a video. The main synergy is Timeless Witness, Lazelle's Acrobatics and a board full of ETB creatures. And it gets pretty wild. Um, uh, play this on, yeah, play this on green. Wall of Blossoms draw a card. Gilded Goose. So we have the Timeless Witness. We haven't found an Acrobatics yet, although eventually we can uh, lean Muldrift to draw, draw cards and then blink the Muldrift. Opponent, fake card. Honestly, out of all the fake cards, Forsaken Crossroads is one of the ones I like the most. Ooh, Prosperous Innkeeper. Uh, okay. Well, in that case, let's Prosperous Innkeeper. Gilded Goose. Gain some life, make some 
Goose food. And pass a turn. Oh, if we can start blinking this board, draw to two food, gain a bunch of life. I assume our opponent's a Coco deck, although this Thalia is going to slow down there. They're Coco a bit. Ranger Captain of Eos, sure. What one drop are they getting? Esper Sentinel? I feel like Esper Sentinel is the best of the one drops. Giant Killer. Hilariously, most of our creatures are pretty small. Well, okay. Uh, yeah, let's just sack a food. Run out Mall Drifter. Draw two. If we hit a land, we can also ephemerate. I mean, I guess we can do it just off the Google. There's Soul Herder. Okay. Well, uh, we will pass the turn. Oh, acrobatics would be so good if we can find it. We're kind of just winning fairly though. Like. Once we play this Soul Herder and start blinking Mall Drifter, opponent. Also, Timeless Witness Ephemerate's kind of a combo. Opponent gets a Thraben Inspector and passes. Oh, there's a land, so play Soul Herder. I mean, eventually the Giant Killer will be able to get that. But in the meantime, we are going to draw many Magic the Gathering cards. A uh, Breeding Pool. We can even start attacking. Look at us. Who is the aggro deck now, Mono White? <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Uh, okay, and then blink the Mall Drifter. Draw two cards. Looking for Acrobatics and Panharmonicon. Those are those are the big payoffs. Siege Rhino would also be good. Okay, there's a Rhino. We will accept a Rhino. Pass the turn. Opponent untaps. Finds a land. Skyclave Apparition. Sure, that's fine. That's gonna die eventually anyway to... Yeah, let's uh, Ephemerate the Mall Drifter. Draw some cards. We'd rather just Blink Mall Drifter. We'll find another Soul Herder eventually. Soul Herder is like really good, but it's not essential. Gain some life, draw some cards. Opponent cannot attack through these wall blossoms. <laughs> they are literally stonewalled. Oh, we do have to pay one, which is awkward, but worth it. Blink the Mall Drifter, draw some cards. Gain some life. It really does feel like we're just playing a whole different game of magic <laughs> sometimes with this deck. Lands in Mall Drifters. Well, um, Siege Rhino, drain you. Gain a bunch of life. Land on green, untitled Gilded Goose game, and go. We might just be winning in the fairest way ever. Like, all we have done is cast stuff. <laughs> we haven't done any, like, huge shenanigans or anything. We've just, we've just been running it out. Opponent, Inquisitor Captain, uh-huh. Not as good as it used to be. Opponent, gonna do some seeking. Thalia's Lieutenant, sure. I really want those acrobatics. Uh, all right, blink the Mall Drifter. Draw some cards. If we find the acrobatics, we got the loop because we already have the Timeless Witness. So draw some cards, gain some life. Oh, blink the Mall Drifter. I guess we could just blink. All right, they're gonna sack a ranger captain, sure. So we don't get to ephemerate, which, yeah, I guess you got us. In that case, we will just, I guess, play more sea shrinos. Hit you down to 10. While a blossoms draw a card. So much value. A sickening amount of value. <laughs> Uh, play the headquarters. Well, since we didn't get to blink the Mall Drifter, we get to hit our opponent with it. And we're up to, uh, 33. <laughs> Against the aggro deck. <laughs> You're go about it. I'd love to draw the acrobatics for the win. Oh, it'd be so fun. Opponent, Catilda. Ooh. All right, so opponent's gonna have a good turn. They have a lot of mana now. Brutal Kava. Opponent's so tired of us blinking the Mall Drifter, they, they just went for it. Opponent passes. Not an acrobatics. Well, in that case, I think we uh, Skyclave. We want that Mall Drifter opponent. <laughs> Our card draw will not be denied. Get back to Mall Drifter. Draw some cards. I mean, I guess they had to get rid of it because it's attacking them and they can't stop it. 
Still no acrobatics. We can't really attack. Well, I guess we can. I guess we can attack a little. Like get in with a rhino. We're probably going to trade with something that's not great, but probably worth it. All right, opponent blocks and blocks. We'll kill the Inquisitor Captain. I mean, this is also fine because we have the Eternal Witness or Timeless Witness, so going to the graveyard's not the end of the world. So we kill something. Uh, Charming Prince. I think we get rid of the Skyclave. Uh, so yeah, Blink Skyclave. So we can get rid of the Catilda. Wall Blossoms, draw guard. Oh, this has not even been a little bit close. Up to 37, play the tap land. Yeah, we're gonna get rid of Catilda just uh, just in case. I don't know what big thing our opponent could have in their human deck, but get rid of the Catilda. Your go opponent. Oh, come on deck. <laughs> I mean, we're winning either way. It would just be sweet to win with acrobatics. Pat. Oh my god, there's acrobatics. Okay, this is gonna be good. Go to combat, attack you. So we can acrobatics right now. Opponent does have the giant killer. It's still pretty good. We could also just wait till our opponent taps down. We can do it during their turn. One, two, three, four, five. All right, let's mull drift. Full price. Draw some cards. Land and yeah, we'll just pass. All right, uh, acrobatics. Do some fun things, exile everything, maybe double up all our ETBs. What do we roll? What do we roll? Oh, okay, low roll. I mean, it's still great. Like, it's still absurd. When you high roll, it is busted. When you low roll, it's still really good. It's just not quite, not quite broken. Uh, all right, that went, uh, that went pretty well. We didn't get to see the, the full combo. We just beat our opponent super fairly by just playing magic cards. I mean, bringing a bit more removal seems worth it. The set of the wreckage is kind of hilarious. <sighs> we might have to go down the Panharmonicon. We see that they're a Skyclave Apparition deck, and Skyclave is kind of the, the natural enemy. Can also go down like Vivian and one what? The walls were actually really great blockers that game. Just having the walls up. Maybe we go down one Timeless Witness. We really want a Acrobatics and a Timeless Witness, but Timeless Witness is not like, outside of the, the loop is not super powerful. All right, let's see what our hand looks like. There's definitely a risk in this matchup that we get run over. Like that's, that's kind of the concern. I mean, we're keeping this, although I'm a little sketched out. We need early game, early game things. We'll take those walls or anything, anything to do in the early game. Uh, well, glass pool mimic go. That's not an early game thing. Any one drop, any any two drop. At this point, most three drops. Although Siege Rhino is a good stabilizer. Siege Rhino Ephemera even better. Ooh, an opponent's not off to the fastest start. Thraven Inspector, not yet at least. Now play the tap land. Yeah, we are also not off to a very fast start. Uh, opponent. Oh, cracks the clue. Thank goodness. Okay, opponent is not off to a fast start at all. Don't it gets and hits us. Yeah, let's just charming prince. Do some scrying. Uh, yeah, we probably keep deputy. That is removal. Keep the deputy. Play the tap land. Question's gonna be, do we do we Rhino or do we try to wait until we can protect it with Ephemera opponent? Passes, leaving up Coco, presumably. If we don't Rhino, what are we doing? <clears throat> Not much. Oh, it's so much better if we can Ephemerate it though. I mean, I guess we can just Deputy. Although Deputy, uh, yeah, you know what? Let's Deputy. We can always reset the Deputy with Ephemerate as well. Get rid of Thraben Inspector for now. Play the land untapped. And let's see how bad this Coco is for us. No attacks. <laughs> they gotta have Coco. All right, there's the Coco. Are we dead? Wow, okay. Brutal Cathar. Gonna get rid of the deputy, get back Thraben Inspector. Okay. I mean, I think we gotta let that go for now. Sure, sure, sure. Opponent gets a clue. Portable hole, going after the Charming Prince. Yeah, well, 
Can Siege Rhino save the day? That is the question. Opponent hits us. Down to 14. All right, well, land on black. Rhino, drain you. Another Coco might kill us. If they have the double Coco draw. All right, well, Siege Rhino. Opponent, wow. Okay, they do have the double Coco draw. Adeline and Thalia's Lieutenant, jeez. Yeah, that is probably going to make us die. Opponent. Giant killer, well, all right, blink the rhino. We could use a removal spell or three. Dollar's bodyguard to protect the Adeline. Oh, Thalia's Lieutenant, interesting. The opponent gets in. Yeah, this might be bad. Well, we'll see. We're gonna need to draw something. I'll blink the rhino. Oh, could rhino be enough? Rhino, drain you. Back up to 16. Settle the wreckage would be hilariously good. Oh, more lands. More, more lands. Well, glass pool mimic. Copy the rhino. Get the Yarion past the turn. The Siege Rhinos are good, but I'm not sure they're good enough when it cracks the clue. Oh, uh, if they find a removal spell, we're, oh, we're kind of out of luck. Double Coco is a lot of value. Our opponent's outvaluing us this game somehow. Inquisitor Captain. Kind of Coco number three. Oh, they don't have enough. Wow. Oh, <laughs> All right. That is the way our opponent can beat us for sure. Attacks, attacks. Wow, this was actually kind of close. Even with how horrible this went, this was actually kind of close. Opponent does not attack for lethal. Hits us to two. Oh, Skyclave would have been great in the past, but I think it's just too late to matter with us being at two. Oh, so close. Is there any way we can survive? All right, we got to try to high roll with acrobatics. I don't think this works though. All right, we don't high roll anyway, so we're dead. All right, well, two Cocos, not, not bad for our opponent. Well, we're on the play for game number three. Well, that was, I think, our opponent's best possible draw, and they just barely, just barely won against a pretty bad draw from us. All right, we get to play first. We'll keep this. The Mall Drifters are nice. The Charming Prince is good setup. If we can find like an Ephemerate, that would be nice. Ephemerate Evoke Mall Drifter is pretty good. We got plenty of lands. That's not going to be a problem. Well, land go. Cave of the Frost Dragon. And wow, a sad Dauntless Bodyguard. Well, land and Charming Prince to use some scrying. Skyclave's pretty good. Well, let's see what we can find. We want both of these Magic the Gathering cards. So next turn we can Skyclave something or Fateful Absence. The following turn we can do our Muldrifter Ephemerate shenanigans to draw four. Yeah, this is, this is looking good. This is where we want to be with the value train about to start running already. Opponent, Thalia's Lieutenant gets in there. All right, well, uh, we will kill it. Yeah, we probably want to get down the Skyclave actually. Get down the Skyclave. Uh, opponent. Land. Thrabes. Opponent really needs like a Thalia. I wonder if they even keep the Thalias in against our deck. Opponent passes two mana available. Hit our opponent. Oh, ouch. Okay, full control, evoke molt, we're going for it. They could have instant speed removal, but if they do, it's not the end of the world. Evoke a mold drifter. Draw two. Ephemerate mold drifter. So they could kill it with the ephemerate on the stack, but it was getting evoked anyway. Oh, all right. It works, we draw two more. Those are good ones. This is feeling a little bit more like uh, like game one with how this is playing out. We're getting the value engine running. We haven't been cocoed multiple times, although we might get cocoed here. Okay, main phase go go. 
Just an Adeline. Opponent passes. Well, we'll blink the Mold Drifter. Draw some cards. <gasps> acrobatics. Oh my god, acrobatics. I think we wait though. I think we first play Prosperous Innkeeper. Faithful Absence to Adeline. Play the headquarters. Hit you. So we got the, we actually got the loop set up. We got the loop set up. We got the eternal witness. We got the acrobatics. All we're missing is like a siege rhino or something. All right, Inquisitor Captain. What do we find? Skyclave. Well, you can't hit the Muldrifter. Hits our Skyclave. And a tap land. Now nah, let's timeless witness. Get back ephemerate. Play the tap land. Pass. And opponent scoops it up. <laughs> the value is just. Oh, this deck's so sweet. This deck is so sweet. Oh, that was so good. Well, that was not even as spectacular as it can get with this deck. It can get more spectacular than that. But that was a, that was a pretty good one. That was a that was a pretty good one against aggro. Well, let's keep blinking them. <laughs> sweet, sweet. Much brew about nothing time. We are oh, keeping this. <laughs> Blink and Siege Rhinos. Playing some uh, four color acrobatic. Acrobatic Rhinos? Acro I don't know what to call this deck yet, but we're blinking stuff for value and it is sweet. And this hand is really good as long as we hit a land or two. Our colors are super awkward. Could get punished for the no white mana hand. Ooh. Land of Elves, okay. Uh, all right, land. So we need to land so we can evoke Muldrifter into land Muldrifter Blanket, and then our mana trouble should be over, but ugh, this could go wrong. Opponent's got the mana dork. They're presumably aggro. Oh God, Burning Tramissary. Oh, Spellbreaker. Not a land. Okay, well, uh, yes, we are, we're dead, okay. <laughs> well, two land, one keep. I think at that point, it's just not worth showing information. Are we 0% to win? No, but we are pretty close. And I don't think it's worth showing uh, showing our opponent any more info about our deck. Uh, all right, bringing a bit of removal. I mean, this deck has, the late game engine is almost unbeatable. Like once it gets going, it's so good. The challenge is always, can we get to it? Can we survive to the late game? Also, what do we cut here? <sighs> Maybe the Vivian. Maybe we gotta go like an Ephemerate. Wall of Blossoms actually seems good. We can trim like a Charming Prince. Maybe one Timeless Witness. And it's probably got a uh, Panharmonicon is just so slow in this matchup. At least Yarok gives us a relatively big life linking body, which is kind of nice. It, at least it's a uh, does something. Panharmonicon against the aggro deck. Well, I'm not keeping this one. Panharmonicon against the aggro deck like this can just go super wrong. Okay, tap lands for days. However, are we putting Moldrifter to the bottom? That feels so bad. But I think the answer is yes. <laughs> All right, so uh, tap lands for days, but we do have to settle the wreckage, which could get our opponent. And this wall of blossoms is pretty nice. It hurts to have to pull M Mull Drifter to the bottom. All right, they got the land of where elves start. Well, we will continue playing tap lands. Go. Gruel Spellbreaker. 3 3 hits us. Well, wall of blossoms draw a card. Ooh, there's acrobatics. All right, tap land. <laughs> Triumph Central over here. Opponent. Land, untapped. Questing, jeez, getting worse. Goes attacking. I mean, we get to block the Spellbreaker. Charming Prince. Oh boy, the Spellbreaker means we can't settle the wreckage, which is bad. We might just be dead. I think we got a scry. Titan's too slow. Tap land, not necessary. Ooh, all right. Tap land, go. Yeah, this. <laughs> our secret tech of Settle the Wreckage. Not going to do anything at the moment, Pelt Collector. So we got to find a removal spell for the Spellbreaker. 
Are we about to get Ember Cleave to death? No. We got a find a removal spell for the Spellbreaker, so then we can settle the wreckage. That is where we are at. So we can Acrobatics, but we die. We can shock ourselves to Moldrifter and then probably die. Oh, the hidden text. You and Gruul Spellbreaker have hexproof. Have we finally found an opponent that can beat our blink value? Although, really, game one was probably more on us than anything. Well, yeah, I mean, I think we're dead, but I guess we Moldrifter. We were dead to basically anything. Ugh, those cards don't help. Pass the turn. Yeah, well, if there is one thing that's good against our deck, it is curve out aggro with fast starts, and we have answers to it, but our opponent has the answer to our answer thanks to the Spellbreaker. Rampaging Ferocidon grows the dorks. Attacks with most things. Block, block, block. I mean, we gotta try to get rid of the Spellbreaker. Uh, okay. Well, we're at two. That's not a lot of life. Life gain is off. Well, if we play something, we're at two. I feel like if our opponent had a burn spell, we'd already be dead. Well, play the tap land. Is it even worth playing a Gilded Goose? Yeah, I mean, we're dead to stomp, but we're we're dead to many things at this point. Pass the turn. The problem is we can't actually even... Yeah, this questing beast. Our creatures are so small. Please just swing with everything. Opponent. Thinking about sacking the oasis. I mean, the question is, do they actually try to play around? Okay, they grow the questing beast. Interesting. Goes to combat. Well, okay. That is what we needed to happen. <laughs> that is exactly what we needed to happen here to have a shot. Opponent swings with everything. We get him with the settle. I mean, that's, that is literally it. That was our hope. Opponent gets a bunch of lands. Felt collector, sure. We need to sack the food. To get out of the range of death. Floral Hedron tapped, and then... Yeah, I mean, I think we just acrobatics. High roll, high roll, please. Okay, there's a high roll. Everything comes back in. We get all of our ETBs. We draw three, we get a food. Ooh, Wandering Emperor. Okay, and then everything comes back in again. We draw a god. Lizelle's Acrobatics is like a messed up magic card. Are we gonna stabilize? Wow, I think there's a chance. If we can survive this turn with these two prosperous innkeepers, I think we stabilize and win. Opponent. Wow! They top decked it! They top decked it! Oh! Whoa! That is unfortunate. Opponent top decked one of those two, uh, Questing Beast or Robin on Bruins. We survive either one of those. And if we untap here, the game is so over. We get to double innkeeper. We got the Wandering Emperor. Like, the game is over, but opponent top deck five damage. Fair enough, I guess. Much brew about nothing time. We are doing some more acrobatic panharmoniconing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love this deck. This deck is just the most fun I've had playing. Uh, playing Historic in a very long time. Oh, it's just so sweet. Well, let's hand, uh, hopefully we have some mana. If we have some mana, ooh, all right, tap land. Uh, what we want to get to is Moldrifter Ephemerate. If we can get to that, life will be good. This goose living would really help. Uh, all right, Hong Kong, Guild of Goose. And I'm sure it's gonna die. Uh, play tap land, go. The goose living would be great because then we can do it next turn. All right, there's the bone crusher, sure. Well, come on, Landorinos. Untap land, junding by the looks. Bone crusher giant. This is tough, what do we do? So we can evoke, evoke Moldrifter, draw cards, and then Timeless Witness back the Moldrifter. Life would have been a lot easier had the had the goose lived. Losing that goose is actually a big deal. We can also just play a tap land and, yeah, all right. Ouch. Ouch, Moldrifter, draw two, lose it. Hmm, well, there's the geese, geese for days. Opponent land. Chandra Torture Defiance. Gonna need to find some removal. Opponent takes up, hits a land. And we're kind of dying. Opponent gets and hits us down to 12. That's not great. Charming Prince. Charming Prince. 
Scry. Land in another Mole Drifter. I don't think we can afford to keep the Mole Drifter here. Uh, Gilded Goose, honk honk. Tap land. Yeah! Our opponents just played efficient things, and we've got pretty punished by our uh, our clunky mana here. Our painful mana. Our mana's been fine for casting spells. Uh, opponent's ticking up. Oh god. Another boom. Eldorain. Can't believe we're going back to Eldorain already. Who knows what goes on in Wizard's mind. Remember that plane that broke every format and made people hate magic? Let's do that again. <laughs> Remember everyone quitting the game? We should go back there. Yeah, we're just gonna scoop. And the Chandra's gonna go off. And there's a, yeah, we're just gonna scoop. All right. Well, those Bone Crusher's pretty good. I mean, the weird thing about Alderaan is I like the flavor of Alderaan. The problem with Alderaan wasn't the flavor. I think the, like, the fairy tale flavor was sweet. I actually like that aspect of the set. But the power level was just so messed up that, uh, it's, uh... It, it's scaring me. The idea of going back to that set is scaring me a lot. Uh, but we'll see. I mean, hopefully Wizards, they have to know, right? They have to know what happened last time, and the the my concern my concern is twofold. Well, one is you can't do original Alderaan again because that set was so busted that it it really did uh, like greatly harm the game of Magic. Uh, that whole era like really harmed the game of Magic. So you can't just like do all the busted stuff again. But if you go the other direction, that's also pretty bad. You can't just go back to a set that's known for being incredibly powerful and and make it super watered down so no one actually wants to play it. That would be equally disappointing. So it seems like a really tough plane to return to. Like you somehow gotta make it strong enough to still be exciting. And there's no way it can be as strong as the original cause the original broke everything. I do not envy wizards with their uh, their goal of returning to Eldorain. Ixalan will be interesting too. Ixalan's got the, I guess it won't be hard to make a better Ixalan cause Ixalan was whew, just so underpowered. That was another set that the flavor is kind of cool. Dinosaurs, Earth Pirates, like it's kind of a unique flavor, but uh, it was just so powered down that it wasn't, uh, it wasn't strong enough to make an impact in many formats. Well, let's play the tap land bass the turn. Get this one out of the way in case we get thought seized. Getting lands thought seized can be brutal. Well, you know what? Let's just play a tap land. We can Charming Prince next turn. Play a little bit off curve to get these tap lands out of our hand. Opponent. Zero one Tarmogoyf. Well, Charming Prince Scry. Two lands. Neither make black mana for Siege Rhino. Do we want to keep one? If we keep one, what are we doing next turn? Nothing? Playing a goose? Yeah, I think we keep one. Untap land to leave up ephemerate. Go. Well, uh, yeah, this is pretty good. We get to blink the Charming Prince, fizzle the Bone Crusher, scry again, put another land to the bottom. And that gets rid of the Bone Crusher forever, which is sweet. Well, blink the Charming Prince. And... I guess we just keep scrying. Okay, we'll keep the Wall of Blossoms. That's not bad. Wall of Blossoms into the land is better than just, than just Wall of Blossoms. So Wall of Blossoms, draw the land. Land on green, Gilded Goose. Okay. I mean, we're starting to get the board build up a little bit. We can potentially Timeless Witness back the Ephemerate. Opponent. Wow, really does not like that Charming Prince. All right, gets rid of the Charming Prince. And passes. Ooh, there's our black mana. Well, I think we Timeless Witness. Or Ephemerate. Spara's Headquarters, go. Okay, the value loop is, is getting close. We're getting close to the point where we're gonna want Acrobatics. Found an untapped land. Kali Toss, Trader of Get. All right, so we want our stuff to not die. Opponent passes. Well, Overgrown Tomb untapped. Siege Rhino Drain you. Pass the turn. Still could use a removal spell at some point. All right, more Tormagoyfs. Tormagoyf. I wonder what the new... All right, there's the the max value Season Pyromancer to draw to. Do we want to start ephemerating? Probably. 
One, two, three, one, two. Yeah, let's Ephemerate Wall of Blossoms draw a card. Ephemerate Timeless Witness. Get back the Ephemerate. One, two, three, four, five. I mean, we could Yarion. Maybe it's better to wait a turn. Yeah, let's Innkeeper. Play a tap land. Yeah, we're gonna keep waiting past the turn. So leave up Ephemerate this turn. Don't get Yarion, because we don't want to get Thought Seized. And then next turn, we can blink everything with Yarion. And once we find the, the acrobatics, we're gonna be in business. Opponent, Elder Gargaroth, sure. And a tab land. Well, okay, let's ephemerate Timeless Witness. Get back the Charming Prince. Gain a life. Ephemerate Timeless Witness. Get back the ephemerate. <laughs> this loop is so good. And now we can... One, two... Three. An opponent! <laughs> ah, sees what coming and scoops it up. We didn't find the acrobatics, but once the engine gets going, it's so strong. And that's what we saw there. Like, the engine is so good once it gets going. And that wasn't even, like, as insane as the engine can get. The engine, whew, the engine can, uh, I mean, get absolutely ridiculous. Ridiculous. Hopefully we get a game where we get to see like the full acrobatics, panharmonicon, just like looping everything absurdity because wow, is it ridiculous. Yeah, maybe we keep the ephemerate and go down what? What can we cut? Could bring in the one settle. The settle could get him. Maybe Tulsimer? I feel like Tulsimer, we haven't seen much Tulsimer can fight. Panharmonicon is awesome, but I think it's worth sideboarding out just because our opponents in colors that should be able to easily kill it. Assassin's Trophies and Coligan's Commands and such. In the matchups where it's particularly fragile, I think it can be worth cutting. All right, let's see what this end looks like. This deck's just so much, if you like value, this deck's just so much fun to play. I mean, sometimes you get run over like we saw in game one. Sometimes your opponent curves out and you're kind of clunking around with expensive stuff and, you know, <laughs> four color mana bases with tap lands and you just get got, but. About it. Blood Crypt untapped and Thought Seize finally. All right, what are we Thought Seizing? Card draw, card draw, removal, and seven drop. I assume they take, well, we'll see. Take some Mall Drifter in ooh, acrobatics. All right, take some Mall Drifter. Now tap land one, go. Opponent tap land. We draw another Mall Drifter anyway. Land on white. Wall of Blossoms draw a card. Ooh, drawing another land would be nice. I mean, we got a tap land, but. We would like to continue to curve out opponents. Wow. Interesting. Snipes the wall. Well, glass pool shores go. So Skyclave can deal with a Kalitas or a Chandra, which is nice. Opponent, untap land, and Chandra. All right. Well, we know what our Skyclave's doing. Picks it up, hits us for two, down to 18. Well, okay, Skyclave, snag the Chandra. Play the Triome, go. Opponent, even more Chandra's. Are we killing the Skyclave? All right. Well, this means we get to do a sweet little Muldrifter loop and draw a bunch of cards. One, two, three. Full control, Muldrifter, evoke. Draw two. And then Ephemerate Mall Drifter. Draw two more. And we get to keep the Mall Drifter now. Okay, that was that was not bad. Play the Taplin. And we're getting close to being able to play Titan of Industry, which is huge. Opponent ticks up. Goif doesn't cast it. Goif does cast it. Season. Wow, we're gonna get to blink Mall Drifter again? Okay. We will accept that. Gets and hits us. No blocks. Down to 12. Well, I mean, Blink Mall Drifter. Draw two more cards. Ooh, and an Ephemerate. That's huge. Uh, Siege Rhino. Gain some life. 
Tap land. Yeah, that ephemerate's really big here. We have to discard a card, which will be probably one of the acrobatics. I think we really only need one. Okay. I mean, we're fairly stable at the moment. Opponent ticks up. Ephemerate can protect from removal. Uh, well, yeah, let's ephemerate. Blank the Mall Drifter draws some cards. <laughs> We're just gonna keep doing this, opponent. <laughs> I'm sorry to tell you, this is going to keep happening, opponent tap lad. Are we done? We just outvalued him. This time I think we blink Siege Rhino. Gain a bit of life. Well, go to combat, hit Chandra. Yarok. Wall of Blossoms. Draw two. Ooh, double removal. Discard a land. I mean, we're getting super close to Acrobatics time with a Yara guy, which is absurd. Pwnit takes up. Another Goyf. Doesn't matter. All the Goyfs in the world are not gonna stop the value loop. Pwnit, sure, Goyf says. And scoops it up. Ha, <laughs> got him. Oh, the deck is so, oh, it's so sweet. The only downside is sometimes we value so hard with our Yaroks and our Rhinos and our Muldrifters and friends that our opponent scoops before we get to acrobatics them. Oh, could you imagine? Like, let's say we untap. I mean, we probably just win, right? So we untap. We can, we do just win. We glass pool mimic the siege rhino, hit you for six. We Lazelle's acrobatics, blink everything. If we high roll, we hit you for 12. If we low roll, we hit you for six more. That's a power acrobat. And we're gonna draw what? Uh, eight cards or something. Like it's ridiculous. The value is ridiculous. So, yeah, all right. <laughs> sweet, 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 sweet. Much brew about nothing time. We are <clears throat> doing some more acrobatics this week on a Magic Arena. Blink in some rhinos, perhaps, we'll see. Opponent, faced with a very difficult decision, would you like to play first? Our opponent appears to have come to a conclusion that yes, they would. <laughs> would you like to have a 10% higher chance of winning this game, yes or no? It's rare that anyone selects no when uh, when you're asked that question, because that really is, I mean, maybe it's 8%, but that, that kind of is what that question is. Like, uh, would you like to increase your win percentage? <laughs> that sounds pretty good. We got Soul Herders. We're lacking blue mana though, which is awkward. We got the Acrobatics, we'll see. About it. Esper Sentinel. Well, uh, Floral Hedron, go. Innkeeper's not a bad draw. Don't really care too much about, about Esper Sentinel. We're not really a permanent heavy deck. Ponet gets in with a Sentinel for three. Well, play the land. Prosperous Innkeeper, go. So opponent's got what? Four cards in hand. They get to pump the Sentinel. We are gonna have to deal with things eventually. Ponet, Dark Steel Citadel hits us. No blocks. Gilded Goose Hong Kong. Uh, so I think we play Gilded Goose. Step one. Make some food, gain some life. Land untapped. Soul Herder. Step two. Gain some life. I don't know what they could have. We're not gonna attack. Blink the innkeeper. Get back our treasure. I mean, we're getting to where we want to be. We are getting to where we want to be. We're gaining life. We're stabilizing. We have the acrobatics in hand. We got removal in hand. All we really want is to keep hitting lands, really. Spire of Industry. I guess in Soul Artifact on Darksteel Citadel's annoying. Karn, okay. What's Karn going to do? Takes down, makes a Karn struct. Abode. It can't really attack. Well, Tangle Floral Hedron. Oh, we could Muldrifter. Although Skyclave might just be better? We're like a turn or two away from wanting the acrobatics. I guess the question is, do we need to answer this Karn? Probably. Well, play Skyclave. Get rid of the 4-4. Four, four. Gain some life. No attacks. Blank Skyclave. Get rid of the Karn. Gain some life. And now our soul herder is getting big enough to actually block, which is nice. Oh, this is gonna be a good, 
a good acrobatics. <laughs> About it as per Sentinel. I feel like our opponent isn't Soul Artifact. You can see him looking at this Dark Seal Citadel. I feel like they have it, but they haven't played it yet. But I'm very confident that's one of their two cards. Glass Casket. Ooh, going for the Soul Herder? All right, there goes the Soul Herder. Opponent going to go attacking and attacking. Well, that hurts, but we're going to take it down to seven. I'll play a Gilded Goose, gain some life. Play a Siege Rhino, gain some more life. Pass the turn opponent to taps, we're back up to 12. Oh, we could really use a high roll with Acrobatics. Ooh, Thought Monitor, very powerful magic card, draws two. And, oh, chaining them together, Thought Monitor draws two more. That is not great for us. Opponent goes attacking. Well, I mean, we gotta block with a, actually, do we have to block? We can Acrobatics here. Yeah, I think we block with a Goose. So we play a land untapped. We acrobatics. We really could use the high roll. Pay the one. Pay the one. High roll. High roll. High roll. We need a 10 plus. We need a 10 plus. All right, there's a 14. So everything comes back into play. We get a few triggers. We will get rid of the glass casket. Get our stuff back into play. Get a few triggers. Get rid of a Esper Sentinel. Pass the turn. Is that enough? That still remains to be seen. We went up to 22, opponents down to nine. We don't have the witness to get our stuff back. Not at the moment. All right, another Karn. Makes a Karn Struct. Tab land, opponent. So what is our plan this turn? One, two, three. What is the plan? Opponent's at nine. We're at 22. Yeah, I think we take it. No blocks. Down to 10. Wall of Blossoms. Get Yarion. Play Yarion. Sack of food. Gain some life. Blank everything. Get some triggers. No attacks. Get some triggers. Get rid of Karn. Ah, uh, can we afford to blank? We're under so much pressure. Well, I mean, we definitely blink. The question is, do we actually blink anything with Yarion? So we grow the Soul Herder. I think we decline, pass the turn. Opponent's down to six. We're up to 18. Can we blink our way to victory? Yarion helps here, because it can actually block the, the flyers. So block, block, take 11. Down to seven. Ooh, Glass Pool Mimic. That's interesting. Wall of Blossoms, draw a card. This is gonna be close. Oh wait, do we win? Maybe. Glass Pool Mimic. The Rhino. Cause the opponent attacked with all their flyers. Hit you with the Yarion? Wow, we survived. Oh. That was an aggressive attack with those thought monitors. That was, wow, that was close. Okay, well, we overcame the anchor rush that game somehow. Uh, bring in anything that can deal with artifacts. Also settle the wreckage. Opponent can make some big creatures, can't they? Opponent was like just pooping out eight eights. Hi-yi-yi-yi-yi-yi-yi-yi. <laughs> Deputy attention actually feels great against a deck like that. Night Autumn's good. I mean, probably Trim a Timeless Witness. Tolsam Mirror. Is it good enough? It can kill things. Maybe we can trim like a Wall of Blossoms? <laughs> I feel bad about how often we cut, we cut Panharmonicon, but I think it's just like, 
against these aggro decks, you kind of have to. It feels so bad, but I think it's just... It's just the reality of 2022 magic against the aggro deck. I just, I can't imagine us being able to take a turn off against a deck this aggressive to play it. Well, I mean, we'd like to hit our land drops, but assuming we do this, and pretty sweet. Yeah, it's a land. Triumph go. So hopefully we can innkeeper into soul herder blink innkeeper. All right. Automaton. Well, get down the innkeeper. Pass the turn. See what our opponent's follow up is. So this has what? Ward two. Dark Seal Citadel. Ooh, another one. All right, these things are going to get big. Oy, 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 they're going to get big now. Okay, opponent hits us for a bunch. No blocks. Well, play Soul Herder. Headquarters. No attacks. Blink the innkeeper. This might come down to if we can resolve a settle the wreckage. That might be this whole game. Opponent. Land. I feel like this deck could have counters, although I don't know how many counters they'd bring in against us. About it. Hits us with everything. We'll take it for a few million. Down to nine. So opponent appears to be representing counter mana. Not play Knight of Autumn. Okay, there's the counter. Yeah, I mean, it's possible we're just dead here. No attacks. Blink. I mean, I guess it's not super likely because we can block with the Soul Herder, but... All right. Opponent. Land. Unblockability. Attacks, attacks. No blocks. Down to five. Ooh, there's acrobatics. Oh, play the land. We might be okay. No attacks. I mean, this is a turn we got to try to settle the wreckage. Blink the innkeeper. We have enough treasures that we can play for a metallic rebuke, which is... That is helpful. Opponent. Ornithopter grows the dorks. I mean, the question is going to be, can they can they counter it? Can they counter it? Do they have, like, a negate or a veto or something? Well, I mean... Settle the wreckage? Can you counter it? Can you counter... They're counting treasures. Uh, we will spend some treasures. Oh, resolved. Okay. Oh, we're alive. And opponent gives it up. We managed to stabilize and win. We didn't get to do too many cool things because our opponent's deck was so aggro, but a win's a win. A win is a win. Sweet, sweet. So what did we learn this week about Lizelle's acrobatics in Historic? And the deck's amazing. So yes, occasionally you play against aggro and you got a bunch of tap lands and you get a slow start and you get run over. We saw that against like the Gruul deck. They just had fast starts. We had slow draws. You get one over. But really this deck is pretty competitive. We have worked our way through Platinum up to Diamond with the deck. And it wins way more than you think because it is almost unbeatable once you get things going. And even the aggro matchups, it's not that bad like we got wall of blossoms and charming princess plenty of early game blockers early game removal to buy us time until we get to the late game and once we get to the late game you got to see it just like lizelle's acrobatics is a busted magic card that does absolutely crazy things in the right deck so i love this deck this is just like oh, my favorite way to play magic so much value so many card drawn so many triggers going on this deck it is just it's absolutely a blast it is so incredibly fun to play so if you're looking for something different to do on Arita. I would recommend it. The deck is super fun and, I mean, competitive enough. We're ranking up at a, you know, medium rank on Arena. Could you hit Mythic with it? I don't know. I never play a deck long enough, one deck long enough to actually find out, but it does seem good enough to win a lot of games and you get to do it in a really sweet, awesome way. So that's Lizelle's Acrobatics. That's our Much Improved for this week. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it and make sure to come back next week when we'll be exploring new Dominaria United stuff. So until then, have a great whatever everyone, and I will talk to you soon.